As I promised, since the animation cells of Ohm were discovered, I will show them to you. I have already talked about how these came to me in Nico Nico livestream on May 6, 2018, so check that out for details. To be more specific, anime shops used to sell animation cells in the past. That doesn't mean all cells were sold at the shops. First of all, the cells had to be sorted into what could be sold or not. There are companies that mediate business between the filming studios and the anime shops. Cells first come from the filming studio as industrial waste. To be more precise, for example, a company called Topcraft made Naushka, but Topcraft didn't sell the cells to anime shops directly. In case of Topcraft, after the shooting of Naushka was over, they thought they didn't need the cells used for the shooting anymore. So they disposed them as um, industrial waste. Then the middle company said, ah, you don't have to pay for industrial waste disposal. We will take them for free, but instead we sell the good ones to the anime shops. Would that be okay? So that being said, the anime production company, usually struggling with cash flow, accepts the offer saying like, oh, well, we are grateful if you can do that. Then, the middle company tried to sort out from such a huge amount of discarded cells, but most of them are worthless cells, such as just a mouth for a limp sink, or just a hand. Among such waste, when they finally found some useful ones, they combined them with background pictures, stapled them together, put them in a bag, and sold them for 3 to $5. So, that's what happened back in the days, and how the cells of Naushka were discovered. Okay, now please give me the first small one. Thank you so much. Right now, I am touching the cardboard part, but from now on, I will wear gloves. This is why I can't show these that often. Unless I wear gloves, because these are so precious and priceless, this is called the Ohm cell prototype. These are the separated parts. Each one is, do you see? Cut from a painted cell. So Ohm is made of separate parts. This cell is painted directly on the back like this. So what you see from the front side is actually painted from the back side, imagining how the front side should look like. Quite an artisanship. So these are painted like this, cut out into pieces as separate parts and then combined into an ohm shape. Let me show you the actual motion. Please give me the next vertical one. This is the real cell used in the scene where the ohms attack. Is it alright? No reflection of the light? Okay, so if I pull this black part below, the individual parts that were cut out, oops, sorry. The individual parts that were cut out will move in conjunction with each other. Well, let's just do it rather than verbally explaining. Are we alright? Look at the upper part. They move like this. See that? It's really like the motion in the movie, isn't it? This was how the film was really shot, by actually moving these parts, so the ohm really looks alive. I found three different types of ohm cells, so lastly, let me introduce the biggest one. Okay, thank you. Colossal, huh? Yes, yes. This is the biggest one. This is for the scene where the ohm moves sideways. Now, let's pull. This is how it works. Do you see? This was how Naushka was made. Now, underneath the cells are very fine lines called gauges, which indicate where the cell parts are currently located, so you can tell how many millimeters to pull which part to make what motions. 
It's now moving with a shaky motion because this is supposed to be placed horizontally and shot from directly above, not like this. So it's shaking, but if you put this horizontally, it should move smoothly. Thank you so much. Would you give me the vertical cell again, please? Okay. I may have said fixed with rubber, but I think it's hard to tell. I want to show the rubber part. Even if it takes some time, I'll touch it carefully. Uh, maybe not. <laughs> if you look at the back, you can see how the rubber is attached. But it, if worse comes to worse, this can break, so please forgive me for not showing the rubber part. There you go. Oh, that was scary. <laughs> Let me take off the gloves. Gee, that was scary. So... It's so-called pastel chalked. The textural look of the cells turn out totally different from that of ordinary cells, but not many people know how they are made. I like these sort of things, as I like special effects. Process of animation making is mostly drawing, painting, and directing actions and movements. But sometimes it's made by craft work like this, which awakens my love towards crafts. Now, this fall in Hollywood, a movie museum will be opened. That will be the world's largest movie museum in the world. And I heard that the first special exhibition there is about Hayao Miyazaki. So my guess here is that the new Miyazaki movie is now forecasted to be finished sometime next year. The story about the movie museum spread as uh, news sometime at the end of last year. But I have already speculated that Suzuki gave an okay because Miyazaki's new work seemed to be finished soon. In fact, there was an on informal contact from an official of the museum at the end of last year. They said, it seems that you are taking care of the Ohm cells, so by all means, we would like to display them at our first special exhibition that features Miyazaki. But now, I only keep them, but not own them. So I asked the owner indirectly through the owner's proxy. The person who really owns these cells does not want to disclose their identity or stand out. So they said to me, I do not want to appear in public, so I would appreciate it if you could negotiate as a proxy for the time being. So at this moment, the owner is considering whether to lend them to the Hollywood Museum. I haven't heard the decision yet, so I don't have anything more to talk about that. However, since these are such precious materials, I think it's better to show people all over the world. So if there comes any follow-ups, I will let you guys know. So that's all for today's free broadcast. 